only spirit. There is only God. And if there is only God, what the hell are we doing here? We want to discuss the relation of the absolute to the relative. And Schelling's burning question, why is there something rather than nothing? And is there a way to actually plumb the depths of this question into the depths of consciousness itself? So if there's any sort of certainty to that question at all, if you're the type of person to ask anything about ultimates whatsoever, why are we here? What is spirit? What it is our ultimate concern? Then the answer to that is to be found, if it is to be found, in a deep plunge into the very nature of our own awareness and our own being. And that what we are, in effect, doing when we practice spiritual practices is engaging in that experiment, that ultimate experiment of attempting to plumb the very depths of the infinite in the very nature of the here and now. If you think of the absolute as just being pure spirit or pure awareness or pure consciousness, as it begins to manifest or take on form, it of necessity takes on perspectives, takes on particular views and roles. And as that pure awareness or pure consciousness takes on its first perspective and begins to take on the viewpoint of a unique self, then this unique self, in a sense, is your doorway, your intersection between your ordinary empirical self and the ultimate. So what is this unique self, this unique perspective that even God needs in order to manifest? In order to be seen, in order to know itself, spirit needs to manifest, needs to in some sense look at itself through our own eyes. There's no other way to do it. And so the traditions have different names for this and obviously you can look at your unique self, which is not the ego. The ego is a little bit down the road on the crystallization process. And you can look at it both as the unique self on the way down, if you will, as spirit is first manifesting into your unique self. And then also on the way up, as you are attempting to come out of the veil of ignorance and rediscover spirit, unique self in that sense is the last barrier to the divine. Whereas on the way down, it's the first expression of the divine. And so the relationship to this unique self is one of the things that we want to talk about. There's sometimes a distinction is thought that the Eastern traditions tend to emphasize more the radical, impersonal, transcendental, pure non-dual, without a self of any sort. Whereas the Western traditions emphasize a soul or a unique self in relation to the impersonal divine. Clearly there are traditions east and west that do both. And what we really want to talk about is how can you have this whole suite? How can you be aware of this ever-present non-dual awareness in yourself? But then also how can you honor your unique self? Because that is the vehicle through which the divine has to express itself. So without being identified or attached to your unique self in its perspective, let alone your own egoic self, how can you honor that as a doorway to awakening and then as an expression of that present awakening? How can you live up to your unique self, the authenticity that is your perspective and your perspective alone, the radical uniqueness that is the first way that spirit begins to express itself in a world of form and a world of action? and a world of compassionate care.